All right. We are northbound here called the Head of Island 8 on the lower Mississippi River, getting up towards Cairo, Illinois. And um, I wanted to uh, give you a, a little food for thought this afternoon. See if it might be a blessing to you. Um, in the book of Jose, where this is coming out of, and the Lord said he would take the valley of Achor and turn it into a door of hope. Now Israel had been living in sin, um, spiritual adultery, consumed by the gods of the world, Baal and Balaam and, and Chemosh and all the all the gods of the Hittites and the Havites and the Jebusites and all the Ites. And they had taken all that on. They was told to not marry them, told to not intermingle with them because they would be just that lifestyle of the heathen would draw them away from God, and it did. And so this is a story of redemption as they had gone whoring after the world and after the things of the world. And this is a story of an analogy and typology of how God brought them back, the nation of Israel. <clears throat> and he took them out of the valley of Achor, which means, uh, Achor means gloomy, muddy, turbulent, dejected. And so that describes their life as they were separated from God. And they said, that your sins have separated you from your God. And away from God, there is no peace. There is no hope. There is no joy. There's no, there's no satisfaction. The flesh is like a consuming fire. It's always reaching for more, and it can never be satisfied. And so that's the way Israel was depicted as, um, as living in, in the valley of Achor, the valley of gloom, the, like when they were in Egypt and the taskmasters of Egypt was um, in the cruelty of slavery and but God brought them out and destroyed the Egyptians and destroyed Pharaoh and Miriam and the women played their tambourines and sang victorious on the other side of the Red Sea and so Israel now is dejected and turbulent and dark and gloomy and their waters are not fit to drink. They're muddied and you may find your life today in muddy waters. You may find your life in turbulent waters that you can't swim in. You find yourself in waters and in a place that is dark and gloomy and where there is no hope and no peace. But God said he will turn that around and take the valley of hopelessness and darkness and the valley of gloom and the turbulent waters and your life that is so turbulent and without structure and uh, you can't, it's, it's, you can't drink it. You can't catch fish out of it. You can't produce. It's just rushing and turbulent. And God says, like David, he said he'll make you to sit down by still waters. And it's by those still, calm, clean, pure, easy, running water barely flowing enough to keep it pure and 
keep it moving. For out of your belly shall flow rivers. And these rivers are not turbulent. These rivers are calm, but yet they flow to maintain purity. And, and David said, and he restoreth my soul. And, and he's going to live forever. And so it's in the valley of Achor, uh, that in the valley of trouble, that, that whatever's going on in your life and the troubles and the problems and the issues and all that's happening in your life, God will bring you peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world giveth, but such as I give. He said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And so God will take you in those troubled times, and take you in the dark night, take you in the turbulent waters that you can't swim in, and, and will would be ultimately lost if somebody didn't come to your rescue and throw out the lifeline so that you could turn back before it's too late. And, and God will restore you and he will build you up and he will um, strengthen you and David said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life so that God will restore and bring back what the canker worm and the locusts have taken and destroyed. And God will replace that. And he'll replace like he did Job all those bad things that happened to Job losing his kids and losing his home and family and losing his crops and he lost everything but he and his wife said you might as well let's job you're caught up in the turbulent waters job you're in a dark gloomy muddy place and and there's you ought to just curse god and curse the day you live and Job said, you talk like a foolish woman that though he would slay me, I will not curse him. And God hadn't done anything to you. Life may be cruel. Life sometimes is hard. Life has its moments. But God is able. And Job was restored and doubled and more than he had ever had before. And, um, and so there is restoration God will take you and make you a new bride. He will, old things are passed away and all things become new. And he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he will take and make you a new bride, the bride of Christ. And you're born into the kingdom and all the analogies of a bride. And the Bible says there in Hosea that Israel would call God Ishai, I-S-H-I, Ishai, which means that uh, God would be their, God would be their husband, that God would dictate to them, um, it won't take but a minute here to do while I'm doing a podcast. And, and so God would take and take them and restore them as a bride and that Israel would now rather than being dejected and rejected and and undesirable God sees in them a bride a beautiful bride and God will take them and God will restore them and his name is now Ishai and which is um, which means husband and so now Israel takes on those attributes of a virgin and of a bride and even though she's lived the life of whoredoms 
and now God is restoring her and cleansing her and giving her new birth. And Nicodemus, you must be born again. But how am I going to do that? That I enter into my mother's womb once again. And God is able to restore you and bring you back to life. And, and what was dead is now alive. And what was lost is now found. And what was dejected is now uh, desirable and received. And so their attitude towards God has totally changed. And they're like the young bride and, uh, and, and a virgin that, that, um, that comes to her husband. And now she is experiencing all things new, a new a husband and a home. And she's left all the other behind to take on the role of a wife and subjection and obedience and willingness to serve and live and love a master that takes her in and desires her and her beauty and her love and all about her is desirable. And so... Israel that had been so bad and so the 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 um, uh, the the life that the nation of Israel had followed when Mo as an example when Moses went up on the mountain the first thing they did they just couldn't wait and they made them a golden calf and uh, stripped off naked and and began to practice the sexual conduct of the heathens around them and the Egyptians and 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 uh, all that that encompasses the world around them then they take that right back on rather than waiting on God and giving God a chance to show up and prove himself and rather than doing that they go right back and they take their hand off the plow and they take their eye off the mark and they turned from God to go back to the world. That's what happened to Israel. But God said he's going to take all that away from her and make her pure as the driven snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as wool. And though they be red as crimson, they shall be white as snow. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus has taken all the sins of the world upon him and cleansed and pured and sanctified the people of God. And in that process, in the process of being the bride, as we, as our love grows, she loves him when she marries him. But if it's done right and her heart's right, and it's all like it should be, then love grows and love matures and love becomes more and more, not less and less. The people that their love is less and less, something is wrong. They need to take an account. They need to look at themselves and see what's going on and why their love has waning and why it's getting away from them. <clears throat> but now Israel could call God Ishai, my husband. And that says huge things when Israel can call God her husband so that she is humble and pure and obedient and willing and uh, dedicated and a life of peace and calm in the home and not dejected but received and, and loved by her husband. And so you can see the valley of Achor that is turned from a place of gloom and turbulence and trouble into a place of hope and blessings. And that's God's desire for your life, that you would give yourself to Him 
commit yourself to him and in the life that and you may you, you may not be in sin but life the valley of muddy waters life is all muddied up for you not because of sin but because of life and the waters is muddy and they're not pleasant and and they are turbulent and you seem like you can't make it you can't hold your head up and the darkness you are stumbling trying to get a grip and find your way as you are tossed and in the waters in the dark waters and God will reach down and calm those waters and bring forth the light and the peace that you need in that troubled moment and make it the valley of Achor, the valley of hope, rather than the valley of darkness and the valley of muddied waters and the valley of turbulence and gloom and trouble. And God will give you peace in the valley and love and kindness and gentleness and meet every need that you have and God knows what you have need of it's not like he doesn't know where you're on where you're at he knows everything about you and every situation and as we cry and pray and call out to God he is able to come to us and meet the needs that you have in your life if you will only come to Jesus, recant, turn around, repent, go the other way, and come to Jesus. And he said, those who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. And he said, if you seek me, you shall find me. And if you call, then I will answer. If you knock, I'll open unto you. If you ask, you'll receive. And God is able. He's knocking at the door. He's willing to calm the waters, to speak to them, so that in just a moment's time, your life can go from turbulence and go from darkness and no hope to where you can all of a sudden find yourself with hope. As you look, that as God destroys the enemies of your life, just as he destroyed Pharaoh, and he will give you the joy of victory, and he will give you the security of marriage and all the typology that's involved in marriage. And God will secure that and provide. He's El Shaddai. He's God my provider. And God will provide. And all the names, his name is Jehovah Nisi and all these names. I, got, I don't have it all in my mind right now. I'm just talking to you out of my heart, but I've studied all that in the past and but that God means everything everything that you need everything about you every sin every trouble every temptation every burden every hurt he is the balm of Gilead Jesus will heal the sickness and the disease of sin and trouble in your life and he will restore you and bring you out and do like David did said he restoreth my soul and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil for thou art with me hallelujah and so God he is with us and he loves us and he's going to take care of us and so I hope you'll read the book of Hosea and study it. Very powerful, very eye-opening, the mercy of God, how God would take in typology the very worst whore, the very most degraded, the one that deserves 
to be at the whipping post and turned into a slave, but God takes that and restores that and brings that home back together, and God just is able to do anything. There's nothing too hard for God, and God bless you.